hello all welcome back so in our playlist learn airflow this is our second video and in this video we are going to discuss about airflow architecture so let's see what we're going to discuss in this video so in this video we'll first see airflow deployment modes because as we discussed last time so there are several modes where we can use airflow we can use airflow on vm we can use it on kubernetes engine or we can use manage airflow provided by the cloud providers so based on their mode their deployment mode the architecture is slightly changes and because of that first we'll jump into the airflow component and based on how components are distributed across the multiple node their architecture changes so we'll first see the airflow deployment mode then we'll see airflow components then we'll see airflow architectures and how airflow DAG execution flow happens in airflow that we will see in this video so let's get started so first we'll see airflow deployment modes how are there are different ways we can use the airflow okay so i just try to put it in the tabular format for the good understanding because as a human we are pictorial memories and if we try to put it in a tabular format or kind of the workflow or in the flow chart so it's easy to understand and we can just have the summarized view instead of going into the multiple slide so see in the left hand side you can see the deployment mode so we can deploy airflow on a single vms and we can use it on the single vms then we can use it on the kubernetes and we can also use the managed airflow just like google cloud composer or the mwaa which is the aws provided managed workflow for apache airflow and we can also use the astronomer platform where it is kind of the commercial airflow platform along with the multiple features okay so so just try to see one by one what is the difference between all these deployment modes and how these set up separately and i mean how we can use it differently and different different purpose so uh, first talk about airflow on vm so this is basically used for the testing or poc where all the components of airflow like scheduler web server worker metadata db everything runs on a single vm and it is just like for the sharing the dax we'll have just one dax folders and everything uh, all the DAX are uploaded into that DAX folders. Okay, and then the next we can have on the Kubernetes. So Airflow on Kubernetes, where each components executes as a Kubernetes pod, and we can use the Kubernetes executor or Celery executor here. And DAX are synced via persistent volume, or we can connect GCS or S3 bucket here. So this is a one more deployment option for airflow then we are having a google cloud composer which is the fully managed airflow service and it is also on the google kubernetes engine but it is fully managed and the DAX are stored in a gcs bucket so in each of the composer there will be a storage bucket created and it is very easy for all the native gcp integration if your data warehouse or if your databases or all your etls are on google cloud then using a google cloud composer will be easy, easy options here and then the next option is again the mwaa which is a managed workflow for apache airflow so this is the aws provided platform just like a cloud composer which is fully managed and also you can use a salary executor or kubernetes executor and the DAX are put into the s3 bucket and again the easy integration with the all the aws services so here the the worker nodes and scheduler nodes are deployed on the faget containers and the web servers is managed by the aws okay so we'll jump into the detailed architecture of each of this deployment mode i'm just trying to explain what are the different modes available for uh, airflow then the astronomer this is again the like recently popular the commercial managed airflow platform with all enterprise features so here like you don't need to manage a lot of things like cicd observability multi-environment setup everything is just automated in the astronomer so we'll jump into each of this platform as i said and we'll have hands-on on airflow on each of this platform okay so for now just try to understand that we have different deployment mode and based on this deployment mode our architecture is slightly different the components will remain same the architecture will slightly differ so we'll see all the architecture first is airflow on vm then airflow on kubernetes then on google cloud composer then mwa on aws and then astronomer okay 
so these are a different deployment modes hope you are clear now with the deployments mode then we can jump into the airflow components okay so let's see what are the different airflow components so these components are common you use any of the airflow deployment mode if you use airflow on vm or kubernetes clusters or uh, the composer or aws platform or the astronomy so these components will be always there okay that's why i want to just first go to the components and once we are well aware about the component then we can jump into the individual architectures okay so let's talk about first components what is dag dag is the workflow which we define in airflow using the python file okay so dag is nothing but the directed acyclic graph it defines the workflow structures and schedule so these dags are written in python so whenever you want to create a new dag or workflow it is just the python file which you have to upload into the dags folders and task task is like you need work inside a dag so multiple tasks combine and we can create a dag so in each of the task, it can be a Python function, it can be bash command, it can be a SQL job, so anything. So in one DAG, there will be multiple tasks, okay? As you can see on my screen, this is the simple example of a DAG, where one DAG is combined with the multiple tasks, okay? So hope you are clear with the task. So once we have a written Python file with the multiple tasks and DAG, so then we can put it in the DAGs folder. Now this is again an important component of the Airflow. So this DAGs folder location will change based on the deployment mode. If we are using the Airflow VM, then it will be just local local location where you will just create a DAGs folders in Airflow home and all your DAGs file or Python files will be in the that folder. If you are using a cloud composer, that will be in the GCS bucket. If it is AWS, that will be in S3 bucket. Okay. So based on based on your uh, the deployment mode the DAX folder will change but all your DAX file which are written in python will always remain in the DAX folders because your uh, airflow will keep scanning the DAX folders if new python files available there it will just parse and it will be visible on the ui as a new DAG okay so these are the first three components then the DAG parser as i said once you put your python file in your DAX folder it will be passed by the DAG parser so DAG parser is the background process that keep scanning the DAGs it keep reading the DAG it check the syntax of your python files if there is no syntax then it will store the DAGs into the metadata DB okay so then we have the next component metadata DB so when the DAGs are uploaded into the DAGs folder DAG parser will scan the DAG it will check the syntax it will check the schedules it will check the task and all this metadata is stored in the metadata database now this metadata database again is differ from your the mode of deployment if you are using the cloud composer there will be the cloud sql instance if it is the uh, aws then it is again aws managed database instance and mostly it is either mysql or postgres it depends upon the mode of deployment your metadata database changes okay then the next component is executor before that we'll jump into the scheduler so scheduler just monitor the time task dependencies queues for the task execution let's say suppose i schedule my DAG to be executed at the 12 am in the midnight then my scheduler first check the timing and it will load the DAG status scheduled into the metadata database and then the metadata database is again again executor will decide it will check the scheduler uh, schedule from the DAG it will check which DAGs are in schedule, schedule state in the metadata database and based on that it will decide okay which task should be executed and where it should be executed so it's based on the executor if it is sequential executor if it is kubernetes executor or salary executor so we'll see in details what are these uh, different executor types and at the end once your executor decide okay this task should be executing on this particular pod or this particular uh, node then this is your worker node where your actual DAG execution happen where your actual python script execute that is on your worker so these are the common components of the airflow so architecture will jump now into the architecture of each of the individual deployment mode so whenever we are start learning the airflow just understand these basic components what is DAG, what is task what is DAX folder what is DAG parser what is scheduler metadata database executors and workers so even though these are again asked commonly in interview in terms of the troubleshooting if your DAG is not visible on ui what you will do okay there is one more component web server 
okay so i i missed to add here so there is one more component called as the web server where your airflow ui is hosted okay so remember that more important component again that is the web server so you have to understand all these airflow components and now we'll jump into the architecture and we'll see the architectures of different different deployment modes now you will able to correlate easily based on this airflow component okay so i'll just first show you the airflow on vm so this is the simple architecture where all the components are deployed on a single machine now you, you can see airflow users we just author the dag when it authors the dag it will create a python.py file or uh, like dag whatever the dag name.py file and it put into the dags folder once it is put into the dag folder your scheduler reads the file from the dags folder it will pass the dag it will check the scheduling and it will just send it to the executor now executor will check the dag schedule and it will put it on the worker node for the executions and all the logs and status of the task and status of the dag everything each and everything is keep updating into the metadata database okay so this is a simple architecture when we are using the single virtual machine each and everything is on the single node okay and the dag folders is again on the same file system so that is on airflow on vm now let's talk about a distributed architecture where you are using the distributed architecture your component are span across multiple nodes just like a kubernetes then the author or the developer will just write a python file for the dag which is the dag definition file and put it into the dags folders now the challenge here is that your dag file should be sync across all the components even your components are distributed across multiple nodes so your web server should display the same dag your scheduling or parsing should happen uh, the scheduler should see the DAG schedule and it should send it to the executor executor will pick your DAG and send it to the worker and then worker execute your DAG and update everything into the metadata database so all these components are connected okay so you can see the DAG syncing is happening with the worker DAG syncing happening with scheduler DAG syncing happening with the triggerer and also DAG syncing happening along with the metadata db to the web servers and from the web server user will operate on the dag which is kind of the operational okay so this is on airflow on kubernetes now let's talk about the next deployment option we are airflow on cloud composer now why it is easy to use airflow on the managed platform just like cloud composer or mwaa so here you don't need to set up a lot of things here you just create a cloud composer environment and your airflow database which is as i mentioned it is on the cloud sql and it is just taken care by the google you don't have visibility on this metadata database it is completely managed by google and it will be set up in the tenant project so once you create a cloud composer environment two project will be set up one is your customer project where you are creating the cloud composer environment another will be the tenant project where you do not have visibility but yeah each, both projects are connected networking is connected all setup is connected here so it will create airflow database in tenant project which is in google manage project web server scheduler dag processor triggerers workers all these components will be hosted on the google managed project so you don't have any visibility and you don't need to worry about that so all the things like auto scaling auto healing everything is taken care by the google now what you have to do you have to just take care of your bucket because in this bucket you will have your all the logs your dax folder each and everything will be in this environment bucket here you will or your users will upload the dax then you will have composer ui for creating the cloud composer checking the matrix checking the health check and nowadays you can see the dax also on the composer ui then you have the airflow environment matrix you can check the dag fail status logs or any kind of monitoring dashboards you can create so the monitoring logging composer ui and buckets are only in your project the rest of the things are taken care by the google in the google managed project okay so this is about the airflow on the cloud composer now let's talk about airflow on aws which is with the managed workflow for apache airflow so in this also there are two vpcs are created one is customer vpc another is the service vpc which is managed by aws so again the database metadata database is managed by aws web server is again managed by aws so only things will be in your vpc and you need to manage is airflow schedulers and worker nodes here so you can set up the minimum and maximum based on that 
your airflow schedulers and worker nodes keep auto scaling okay so this is again fully managed and you don't need to worry more about the infrastructure so if your other services are on aws then just go with the managed platform definitely cost will be a bit more if you are using the managed platform okay but these are again whole managed by the cloud provider now last is airflow on astronomer which is the advanced platform and where you can see the lot of integrations are taken care by the astronomer you can see there is a cloud ui where we can see all the things like you can see the dax you can see the cicd you can set up the alerts and all, all the cross deployment visibility you can see in the cloud ui and there is also a astronomer cli also where you can use the command line interface to interact with the whole platform and using the api it creates the astro cluster which is again the airflow you will have the airflow inbuilt here and for the deployment you can use google cloud aws or azure and it provides the secure connectivity with the all the external data systems like a snowflake dbt uh, google cloud databricks vmware and all the platform it will provide kind of the easy integration you can easily integrate with the other platform as well so this is all architecture we have discussed hope this is clear now what are the different deployment mode what are the different components of airflow and how the architecture is slightly deeper based on the components deployment options okay so hope you are clear uh, we will see more details more things about airflow in our next video so thank you for watching this video and we'll see you again in the next video